Hello everybody, my name is Jack and welcome back. Welcome back again in the beautiful city of Florence. For another episode of Visiting Italy. In this episode I will bring you inside the beautiful Palazzo Vecchio. However, nowadays it is called in that way, which is the translation for Old Palace, its original name was Palazzo dei Priori. In fact, this building was built in the second half of the 13th century, when the city of Florence decided to build a palace in order to ensure effective protection for the magistrate, called Priori. After that, its name became Palazzo della Signoria because inside it was administrating the legislative power of the city, held by the Signoria. It is in 1540 when it became Palazzo Ducale, when the Duke Cosimo I, the Medici, made it its residence. And finally, it has been called Vecchio when Grand Duke Cosimo moved from this palace to Pitti Palace. So, all was given in order to distinguish between the old residence and the new one. The main entrance of the building is right here, just near the David of Michelangelo. Well, actually, this is not the original David, it is just a replica. The original one is located here, in the Galleria dell'Accademia. The David is a sculpture made of marble. It is 5 meters tall and has been made by Michelangelo Buonarroti. Between 1501 and 1504. The David is widely considered a masterpiece of wall sculpture. It is one of the emblems of the Renaissance, as well as a symbol of Florence and Italy abroad. The work, which portrays the biblical hero as he prepares to face Goliath, is considered the ideal of male beauty in art, just as Sandro Botticelli's Venus is considered the canon of female beauty. Well, going back in topic, as you first enter the Palazzo Vecchio, you will be blown away by the majestic entrance hall. The first courtyard, which is accessed from the main door on Piazza della Signoria, was designed in 1453 by Michelozzo. In 1565, on the occasion of the wedding between Francesco I de Medici, son of Cosimo, and Joan of Austria, sister of the Emperor Maximilian II, the courtyard was frescoed. In the lunettes all around the portico, the insignia of the churches and the arts and the crafts guilds of the city are reproduced, while in the lower panels, the city views of the Habsburg Empire. The first indoor room you're gonna reach after the ticket office, it is called Sala del Maggior Consiglio. Here, the wall roof, it is focused on the portrait of Cosimo I the Medici, portrayed by Baccio Bandinelli and Vincenzo de Rossi with his heraldic device, the turtle with the sail, in gilded stucco above. The wall across from the entrance is decorated with three large frescoes by Giorgio Vasari, portraying important episodes from the war with Siena, which are tied with the seven panels on the ceiling above. At the center of the wall opposite the entrance, there is portrayed the allegory of Florence defeating Siena. In this very room, we can admire a statue of Papa Leone X, aka Giovanni de Medici, son of Lorenzo the Magnificent. Another beautiful statue portrays Pope Clemente VII placing the crown over the head of Charles V. Right adjacent to the audience hall, we can find the room of the very Lorenzo de Magnificence. In the room we can find precious paintings by Giorgio Vasari and Marco Marchetti da Faenza. And the wall ceiling is focused over the symbolic depiction of the ambassadors of the most powerful foreign states paying tribute to Lorenzo. Right adjacent you can find the private quarters of Pope Leone X, Leo X. He was nonetheless one of the sons of Lorenzo the Magnificent. 
Leone X brought prestige to the papacy. And this very room celebrates his most famous exploits, such as escaping from French captivity. After there's a beautiful staircase that brings us to the second floor. On this floor, we can find the new apartments, designed after Cosimo I de' Medici had the palace extended. These apartments were built under the direction of Battista del Tasso from 1551 to 1555. This series of apartments are dedicated to the heavenly deities. Various rooms are dedicated to the various elements, air, water, fire and earth. In this particular room you can admire the beautiful Venus, representing the element of water, of course. From here you can access to a beautiful balcony, showing a beautiful and breathtaking sight of Florence. Going back indoor, you can enter the room of Hercules. Hercules is celebrated for his countless heroic deeds, especially the Twelve Labors. Those deeds inspired the parallel with the room dedicated to the valiant mercenary, Capitan Giovanni dalle Bande Nere, Duke Cosimo I's father. This room it is instead dedicated to Ceres, a goddess of agriculture. Adjacent to this room, there's a small study dedicated to Calliope. Right after, you can access an indoor balcony that offers a beautiful view over Florence city center, but also allows tourists to admire the Sala del Maggior Consiglio, located just below. Now it comes, perhaps, the most beautiful part of the building, the apartments of Eleonora. When Duke Cosimo I de Medici moved his court into the palace in 1540, he assigned these apartments to his wife Eleonora, the daughter of Don Pedro de Toledo, Viceroy of Naples. These private apartments obviously contain a private chapel. Before the apartments were assigned to Eleonora, those rooms were part of the original building. For two centuries they housed the private apartments of the members of the medieval city government, the priors. Of course, priors, i priori, had their own private chapel. This room it is called the audience room. Sala delle Udienze, where Cosimo I was used to receive his subjects. The room is frescoed with the stories of Marco Furio Camillo, the Roman general who fled Rome from the Gauls. Unfortunately, our tour ends here, in the maps room, where the first geographical maps ever made, representing different eras of the world, are displayed. Thank you.